In this video, we'll look into the shear failure of a reinforced concrete beam. The beam is simply supported over a span of 3 meter. It is subject to the 4 point loading as shown here. The load is applied through hydraulic cylinder. The load cell measures the load applied. LVDT measures the mid span deflection. There are two strain gauges attached to the beam. The first one is on the concrete surface to measure the compressive strain on the concrete. The second strain gauge is attached to the steel in tension to measure the tensile strain in the steel. All the data is fed into the data logger. This beam B has a dimensions as shown here. Its width is 150 mm and the depth is 250 mm. It is reinforced with three N2 L bars where N stands for the normal ductile steel. Now let's have a look at how the beam will fail when the load is being applied. Let's have a look at it in a slow motion again. As you can see in this video, the beam has failed in a typical shear failure mode. There wasn't a large deflection in the beam that we could see before it sustained a catastrophic failure. It is a very brittle and very abrupt failure. There aren't many vertical cracks that you can see in the mid-span, but it is characterized by a large diagonal crack in the shear span, where there is maximum shear force. Now if we look into the moment versus mid-span deflection for this beam B which fell in shear mode, we can see that as soon as the beam attained its maximum moment capacity that is 38 kN meter, the beam fails abruptly. There is no yielding of the beam, there is no yield plateau that we can see which we saw in beam A that failed in flexure. And also the deflection at the maximum bending moment is very small, only around 20 mm compared to the beam A which fell in flexure mode, uh, it had the deflection of around 95 mm. So it is a very brittle failure. Without much warning, the beam, beam fell abruptly and very suddenly. We would like to avoid this kind of failure in the rail structures. So now if we compare the moment deflection curve for beam A which fell in flexure and beam B which fell in shear, we can see a clear distinction. The beam A fell in flexure mode and we can see that there is beam is yielding at 28 kN meter and there is a large yield plateau for the beam. For the beam B the maximum moment capacity was around 38 kN meter but as soon as it attained the maximum moment it fell very abruptly and very suddenly. There is no yielding of the beam as compared to the beam A. In the beam A we have only two reinforcements here so the flexure capacity of this beam is lower than the shear capacity of the beam so the, it failed in flexure because that's where it attended the maximum flexure capacity. Now comparing to beam B we have three reinforcements here so that means we are increasing the flexure capacity and as the flexure capacity becomes higher than the shear capacity of the beam the beam failed in shear so the beam B failed in shear whereas beam A it clearly failed in flexure and we can see a clear distinction between the two. Now if we look into the concrete strain and steel strain for beam B which fell in shear, the blue plot shows the concrete strain. We can see that the maximum strain attained is 0.001 which is nowhere near the crushing of the concrete in compression. That means it indicates there was no initiation of the concrete crushing. And the orange line shows the strain in the tension steel. We can see that the steel strain was lower than 0.0025 and it hadn't started yielding yet. That means the beam fell before the yielding of the steel and that is why it was a very abrupt and sudden failure. There is no yielding of the steel in the beam B which fell in the shear mode. Now again comparing the flexure failure and the shear failure modes. In a typical flexure failure we can see multiple vertical cracks. We will see a large deflection before it attains the maximum bending moment capacity. Steel will start to yield before the concrete will crush and the flexure failure is a very ductile kind of failure. Whereas on the other side, the shear failure, as we saw in the video, it is a very abrupt and catastrophic failure. It is characterized by a large diagonal cracks and we don't really see the vertical cracks much in the shear failure. 
and the deflection in the beam is very small when it extends the maximum capacity. It is a very brittle failure and this kind of failure should be avoided in the rail structures.